I love you, sawmill. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is my DIY sawmill. There are many DIY sawmills out there, but this one is mine. So we got larger log cutting capacity, easy heavy log loading, easy log holding, and some other bells to ring today. So stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is actually the $100 sawmill that I posted like two months ago. Um, Frankenstein, we upgraded it. We did a lot of things to it to make it better. Larger cutting capacity. We made it really easy to load logs, really easy to hold the logs, and just made it genuinely, genuinely, generally better. Um, one of the first things we did was extended the track. So we have this much longer track that the saw carriage can ride down. Now it's a, very similar to the last one, but we still made it so it could come off the saw, come, come apart in two pieces. We could throw it in the back of the truck and take the saw carriage and the track out to the woods and cut logs or at a neighbor's house or whatever. So I wanna show you how we did that real quick. Uh, Maggie was up helping me for the weekend and we screwed it together. And um, rather than trying to talk about the whole thing, here's a little montage video for you of the tracks. On this saw sawmill, we're sporting the MS462C um, still chainsaw, and it's working really good for these smaller logs, you know, 20, 24 inches and under. I really want to put an 881 on here. I just can't find them right now. They're not, not available. So as soon as I can get one, we'll throw a bigger sawmill on here. But I made the carriage so it would be big enough for a really big saw or even a smaller saw. So that was one of the things I wanted to focus on when I made this carriage. A couple of the changes we made from the last sawmill was the tower. We reduced the width of the tower a little bit. I put this goofy little handle on here to actually hang bags on the back so I could put some of my sawmill tools in it. And then um, we added some supports to the drill so the drill won't rock back and forth when it's going that way. Now, you can see that we painted everything. We painted everything with an oil-based exterior paint and most of the parts have like three coats on it. Um, if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't just because it took like a lot of time. Not The painting didn't take any time, but drying it took like two or three days um, worth of painting and waiting for the parts to all dry. And that was really kind of an annoying thing. But so the saw carriage, the handle was actually wider in the last video. And I'll link the last video somewhere on screen and down below so you guys can go check that out. And it really wasn't, I really fastened it super secure to this. That really isn't needed. It's basically just something to pull the trigger, turn your winch handle to make the saw go forward. So we made it much narrower, quite a bit smaller. And I didn't go through the hassle of really, you know, 
securing it super well to the saw carriage. It's just got two bolts that come through the base of the carriage and then we can screw them on and screw them off. So we can literally just take the handle off. We can take the tower off because we did the same thing with the tower and like collapse this thing. You could fit this in the back of a car. You, I mean, the, the track and the carriage, not, not the whole thing. <laughs> so let's be uh, fair about that. Some of the other significant changes that we made is I put HDPE on top of the track and on top of the log mount. Um, it's not super necessary. Just painting it and keeping it waxed would be plenty good, but I have a lot of HDP scrap laying around, so we used it. Some other things that are readily accessible that would probably work pretty well are like cabinet countertop laminate material. Um, it's very smooth. Uh, the concern I would have is that stuff is usually applied with glue or uh, contact cement, and in the summer heat, you might lose some of that um, adhesive adhesiveness. I was gonna say cohesiveness, but adhesiveness. And that might be a problem with that, but, uh, and PVC plastics, HDPEs, any of those things would work um, if you wanted to go through the trouble. To make loading some of these bigger logs, heavier logs a lot easier, uh, we built, made it, took a couple four by fours and turned them into these long ramps. And then, and then I created this tower that kind of wedges in between the track and the saw or the log mount and put a winch on top of that. So now I run it from under the log wrap it around to the top of the winch and it's super easy to just sit there and winch up really heavy logs so it's not difficult at all the most strenuous part is actually moving the log to where you can get the winch wrapped around it and get it rolled up onto the sawmill so i know a lot of you were disappointed about me not using a drill on the carriage winch so i'm making up to you as promised loading heavy logs with one finger Making the logs easy to load um, and easy to secure was really a key factor in making the sawmill much more pleasurable to use. So once we got that figured out, the next thing was how are we going to secure the logs? And I didn't want to get too fancy pants with this. There's a lot of systems out there that I saw that were pretty crazy. Um, we're usually just using scrap pieces of plywood that run down, that secure over the top of a, a track that I, or a, a secondary track, I guess that you can screw down in there and then a couple screws in the end of the log holds it in place. Now, if I was going to be doing things like square logs or, you know, different style, different sizes, moving the log a lot, I think I would probably do something a little different. But because 99% of what we are going to be doing with the sawmill is just cutting slabs. So if I want like to cut some of this material into usable like construction grade lumber, I have another build coming up where we build a giant track saw um, powered track saw uh, that'll be coming down the road probably this fall sometime and we would just cut the slabs that would go over to the other big powered sliding track saw and it'd get cut from there into uh, material so honestly a diy sawmill i think is great for slabs and big four by fours big six by sixes and the holding system that we're using now would work really well for that we had some questions in the last video about using the winch and why not powering it well First of all, using a winch makes it effortless, and I do mean effortless to cut through the log. In fact, you have to be very careful not to overpower it because you can stall the log, the saw out. And this is a pretty significantly, this is a pretty good size saw. I think it's a 76 cc saw. I can very easily stall the saw out by turning the winch too hard. So it's slow and steady, and you can kind of feel the pressure through the through the cable and what's going on. So using the hand winch is absolutely the, the best way to go it really does make all that strenuous labor of pushing a saw through a log i mean you can literally just do it with your you know two fingers and it's it works great Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching today. Really appreciate it. I know we didn't go over a lot of things like the trigger pull mechanism, the winch really, how it works and all that stuff. I actually went over that in the last video I did called the $100 Sawmill. And I'll link it right here at the end of this video so you guys can go watch that if you're interested. 
Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps. We'll see you guys in the next video.